Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Polina. And in today's video, I want to introduce you to my 2024 planning system. This is not a complete Techokaigi because Techokaigi or notebook meetings will happen after you develop your system. So what is a planning system? From the word planning, it is obviously organizing your time, your tasks, your priorities that should align with your goals. That is the traditional way of how we see planning. The system part of the planning is going to be about how you would do the planning itself. So how you would execute the planning that you want so that you are better aligned with your goals. Now, quite a lot of us, including myself, would start a planning system by listing down all of the different planners and needs that we want. I'll link that video up above where I talked about how I chose my planners. Recently, when I took a break from both YouTube and Instagram and all of the social media, I had a chance to reflect on the planning system that I used in 2023, as well as the few years before that. I decided that it's ineffective at this moment in time to continue doing that. I am now transitioning into a part of my life where I am no longer a PhD student. And I think this channel was built on me or my journey as a PhD student in Australia and how I am planning to get all of the work done. That time has passed. I graduated this year and I have transitioned very luckily into a new role. It is also academia, but it is not what I had expected to be doing. But I'm very lucky to be doing this now and I have a lot of challenges ahead because I feel like I was completely unprepared. So recently, a lot of us have been overwhelmed with all the planners and books that we have ordered or bought from several different sources, including Hobonichi. The experience now of trying to set everything up can be debilitating in terms of figuring out your planning system. So today I wanted to introduce you to my planning system that I feel like will work best for my role right now and the kind of time that I have and the kind of focus that I need. So let's go ahead and get started with the first segment of this video. So this is my list of more than 20 books. If it's not 20 on here, then this list is incomplete. I wrote it down multiple times trying to figure out how I'm going to be using my planners, my very many planners. Mind that I do enjoy paper, hence paper is joy, paper joy. That's why I have so many. And at the back of my mind, or instinctively actually, I knew that I needed those planners. I just couldn't figure out an overarching system that would connect everything and make my system more organic and make my system effective for achieving my goals. So we think that or believe deep in our hearts that planning is going to help us achieve our goals, that planning is essential. That is completely true. It is quite essential. But the reason why it is essential is something that I haven't thought about aside from the more surface kind of reason. I've written everything down so I will not forget it. I've planned or I've put down appointments in my Hobonichi, for example, so that I could attend all of those appointments. I have so many and I can prepare for them. I feel like at this point in my planning journey, I have been planning for many years. That type of planning is no longer what I needed. And I think that I'm not doing my planners justice if I would just continue to use my planner as a scheduler as a task list and sometimes as a diary. There needed to be something that would make sure that what I'm doing with my planners and I spend quite a lot of time in my planners would be used towards my improvement. And it does not mean that it's just productivity. Uh, productivity is also a loaded word. A lot of people use it in many different ways. I will make a video about that. But today we are talking about essentialism. So let me go ahead and put this away and let's explore my commonplace book. 
So this is my commonplace book. This is once again a Midori A6 blank notebook and I used this a little bit in the beginning but it did not stick so I stopped using it for that and decided to repurpose this notebook to be my commonplace. I wanted to put down an index page but that clearly did not work. None of the pages are numbered. So a commonplace book is a collection of notes on subjects or information collected from other sources, not from you, so not from me. So I have self-improvement commonplace books. These are not project notes. Project notes happen in a very different notebook, and I'm not sure we have time for that today. So I used stickers from Sab Gaid. I will link her shop down below. If you are from the Philippines, it's very easy to get her stuff off of Shopee. If you are international, I'm not sure if she has an international website as of yet. So what you can do is DM her on Instagram, which is actually the uh, handle that I will leave down below. We also have some notes on deliberate practice. And this is the essentialism notes. So essentialism is the disciplined pursuit of less. This is quite popular or was quite popular a few years ago. I think this is pre-pandemic popular. And basically it is saying no, saying no to a lot of things. There were many books about learning how to say no and prioritizing yourself first and this is one of them. Although I have to say caveats that this is applicable for careers but does not consider caregiving. It does um, encourage free time to do the things that it recommends. So if this is not something that you can do or does not resonate with you, then you don't have to do this. But it's great to see how other people would apply this. A lot of this can be applied towards a planning system. However, I will only um, discuss the ones that we will be using or I will be using for 2024. There's quite a lot of information here. Essentialism is being an essentialist. It's like minimalism, but minimalism is an action. Being a, an essentialist is a core value. So it says here that it is something that you are, not something that you do. You need to live from an essentialist core and push non-essentials out. So essentialism in that book, to be relevant, says that for every yes means to say a lot of no. Now I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to explore this because that's not what we're after. Basically, it recommends that you need to invest in places that, re that produce the best results and be results oriented. And this is the value that I wanted to apply to my planning system. I like that the essentialist or essentialism is geared towards people who want to be productive, but at the same time, um, be productive or it's tips or the method itself is being productive not by doing things, but prioritizing on what you do instead of how much you're doing. I shouldn't really go into that anymore because that's an entirely different video. The essentialism has three mandates. You explore, eliminate, and execute. They're all starting with a letter E, which is something that I absolutely love when they do that. Okay. Next we have floor. I will talk to you about that in a separate segment, but I wanted to talk about the executive functions. So within essentialism, it recognizes the executive functions of planning, deciding, anticipating, and prioritizing. Um, quite a lot of us would on any given day would do planning and deciding, anticipating sometimes within the day, prioritizing once a week or when you set things up. Okay, sorry, that was my alarm. I set an alarm for some reason, but that is gone now. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Um, I was talking about um, anticipating and prioritizing. So that's not something that we often do and it because it is the hardest part of planning. Anticipating, prioritizing, deciding, it's exhausting. I mean, a lot of people that I see on YouTube in the comments would say, oh, I like my planners to be quick because it's hard. <laughs> you don't want to spend so much time on a hard thing. You just want to do it and then be done with it because it is hard. 
planning is decision making decision making for hours when you are spending time making your um, list is deciding so it's mentally exhausting and I completely understand that so that's why when I'm doing this hard thing of very mentally exhausting planning I want to be results oriented so it's not how much planning deciding that I'm doing is that I'm doing the right planning and deciding and the rest of the executive functions so that is important and that is also one of the reasons why you, you wouldn't want to plan for an hour like what I do and that is because I am used to it I really train myself to be able to do a lot of planning and deciding and that is one of the reasons why I highly recommend keeping a planner for any graduate school work PhD or masters or similar even diploma or even just projects if you're a postdoc in academia, you do a lot of deciding and planning, anticipating and prioritizing, so executive functions. And if you don't like to do that, if it exhausts you, you need to remedy that because that is something that you will be doing for the rest of your life. So you need to do it very effectively. And that can also apply to a lot of other careers, however. So it's not just academia or graduate school. So this is the passport traveler's notebook. I got this from Changi Airport in Singapore and I bought one insert and this is the one that came free and at the back I have an insert from Noted Journal, 64 pages of ivory smooth paper. I am partial to yellow paper. I don't like white paper. Even the inserts of my file of facts is white. So after this, I will probably not buy another insert from Midori. First, it's very difficult to get here, the one that you like. So this is blank. Oh, by the way, this is from... Oh no, I forgot the shop name, but this is the gamer card. I am a gamer. I played Diablo 4. There is a version of this where it's the planner, but I think this is much more first accurate towards me and it's a prettier design in my opinion, but that is of course my opinion. All right, so these are my planner notes for today. So this is the series for the pursuit of planner piece. So this is the first video. So in this segment, we're going to talk about this part. So first we have explore. So this is the reason why I have multiple planners. And I have been doing this, once again, instinctively. I had no organization, no idea what I was doing. I just liked doing it. I knew that it was working. I didn't understand why it was working. So now I want my planner system to be more reflective in terms of what I do, what I need to get done, and how I can keep myself motivated. So that is another thing that I learned in graduate school you need to keep yourself motivated no one else will do it for you so you need to be strong in that sense graduate school is all about mental capacity of keep going forward not being the best person there but being the person that keeps showing up no matter what first we have explore and there are two things that i want to talk about in terms of explore and one of the tenets of the um, essentialism. Now remember, essentialism is all about being results oriented. So first, in order to do that, you need to record. You need to have a good idea of the things that you do, how you spend your mind, not your time, but your mind. How long does it take you to, let's say, um, write 500 words, good 500 words versus 1,000 not so great words? How much time do you spend recovering from those 500 words? How much time do you need to research? How much time does it take you to learn a new thing? You need to record those so that you can understand yourself a bit better and that will help you with anticipating and prioritizing. So that's why I have so many planners <laughs> that have different purposes because now it's not just my role in academia. I am a housewife, I am a cat mom, I am a wife, I am a friend, I am a daughter. So all those things or roles have their own demands, they have their own goals. So we are going to see 
how much time I can allocate and which of those areas I could prioritize in a day, in a week. So the best way to do that is to have data. You know, in academia, everything is backed up by data. You are your own journalist. You are your own researcher. Research about yourself. Learn more about yourself. Your planner is the way to do that. If you just need a scheduler, you can just use your phone. Your planner should be more than that. That's how I feel. Okay, next is even more difficult. So recording is difficult. Playing is even more difficult, but it is the most fun. Playing is broadening your options. This is the time where you can expand your awareness. It is going to have positive, the most positive impact on your executive functions. So what is play? In the book, or rather the people who talked about the book, uh, is a little vague about this. That is because you can play however you would like. So play is when you let or consolidate all of the data that you have gathered and start forming um, hypotheses. So this is really when you have a proper look of your records. And from there, you can give ideas or generate ideas both based off of the data that you have gathered and you can form hypotheses and see if your hypothesis is correct based on the data that you have or if you need to gather more data about your hypothesis. So that is very theoretical. So let's give an example. For example, if you want to improve drink more water. Okay, let's focus on drink more water because that is universal. So you wanna drink more water, you wanna keep your track of your water. So you make your water tracker, a daily water tracker. You notice that it doesn't work. You just keep on drinking the same amount of water every day uh, the tracker helps a little bit because it lets you face the truth of how much water you're really, really drinking. For a lot of people, that is actually quite effective. If you can see how bad it really is, instead of it's theoretically bad, so I want to prove it, but like you have cold hard truth that you drink two glasses of water a day, the rest of them soda, coffee, juice, etc. Not good. And that may encourage you to improve some more. Like, I don't drink enough water, why? So that is a question and there are several reasons and you test each and every one of them. I don't drink enough water because water is inaccessible to me. I have to walk one meter from my desk. And when you're in focus, you don't want those little um, distractions. I don't want to be distracted when I'm doing my thing, when I'm focusing on something. And if I don't have water that is in accessible to me, I will never drink water. I would never choose to prioritize that over focus hours. So that kind of situation, you can improve it by having a cup of water next to you when you are doing your focus area. So that's another thing. Or recording your activities in the day will let you know how much time you're spending on your focus hours, which is the most important thing of the day. That is play. Play is the most important. Play, how do you execute that in a planner? Um, time planner is good. Time planner is good. Checklists are also good. And trackers. Where's my tracker? Hang on, let's do trackers. Trackers are good for that as well to record those. Maybe in the future, I would explore how you can do the play part of essentialism more like these. And then you can put it in your monthlies. I don't want to open this, but the monthlies are in here and we'll explore more of that later. The things that you figure out here, you can apply to your executive functions. And then the next tenant, so we are now moving on to the next tenant, is eliminate. First, you need to uncommit. Uncommit things that you know is not gonna work, but you're there, so let's just get it over with. Essentialism basically says that you have to stop doing that. If it's not going your way, you need to pivot. It doesn't mean that you will abandon said activity, you just need to pivot. Maybe you go to a party where it's awkward and you are an introvert, and then you say you will just make the best of it instead of you know being socially awkward practice breathing just have little breaks here and there where you can be alone and gather yourself and things like that second is edit best quality only it is not how much you do 
it is how much impact do the things that you did have. Oh no, I am losing <laughs> my English. Okay, so basically choose best impact because you don't have a lot of time in the day. I wish there was more time in the day, but there isn't. And then you don't have enough energy. So what you do is important. You are important. So make sure that you prioritize. So this is also part of executive functions, but it is a reminder that choose the best quality, right? Third is a limit. You have to create boundary. What kind of boundary is the most important is the time that you take to explore. And for me, that would be planning, journaling. Actually, it's not journaling for me, it's planning because journaling is basically word vomit for me. That is for me, listening to myself while I'm writing. And while that is quite effective for high stress or high emotions, um, in terms of productivity, I don't see it as journaling. I see it more as planning. And by that, I mean the executive functions. I should have a dedicated video for that one day, maybe the next one. So you need to take time for this. And that's why I have so many notebooks because I do sit down maybe once a week, every other day where I look at all of my planners and see what's going on. What did I do? It helps me be accountable to myself, make sure that I am aware of what I am doing. I can eliminate, I can uncommit, I can edit, and make sure to schedule time for exploration. Lastly, we have execute. So this is actually quite a lot of tips on planning. You need to have buffer time. Buffer time is breathing room between focus hours or focus time. Focus time is hard. It is exhausting. It is the most exhausting thing that happens in a day because it's the mind. It's not physical. And actually people are already incorporating energy levels, like plan your energy levels. That is very true and that is very effective. But also keep in mind that energy levels, well, for me, when I'm mentally exhausted, that's when I tend to make bad decisions like uh, yesterday I was mentally exhausted we ended up ordering pizza although there was quite a lot of love <laughs> going around in my family because we're having pizza it is also not very healthy and I should not be doing that tomorrow or tonight <laughs> okay next is remove obstacles are there uh, you have goals and are there obstacle obscuring your goals I'm not gonna get deep into the execute part of this. I'm just giving you a list. Um, you can interpret it on your own or you can wait for my next video when I talk about um, these tips. Progress, building a system of small wins. So track your progress. You can break down projects and once again this is so loaded so I can't go into this. So tracking projects and make sh making sure to celebrate small wins. This is also something that my supervisor in my PhD often tells me you need to celebrate your small wins because it can't just be stressful all the time. Flow, you need to have consistent routines and free up more brain space. This is very helpful if it, they are little things. Let's say that meal deciding every day is not something that I like to do, so I will just do a meal plan for one week. And then we have focus. This is the last one, a regular state of focus and attention focused attention and energy. Do what is important now. And I think this is helpful as a an extension of having exploration time and prioritizing for executive function. So not only will you do what is important, you must do it now. Do not delay. That is prioritizing your time, your mind, your life do it now do not procrastinate procrastinating is a way it's a good thing actually it can give you number one buffer maybe that's what procrastinating is about actually i should get a video oh there's so many videos i'm revamping this channel and therefore there are so many videos that i need to make Okay, so that is all of essentialism and basically this is going to be an hour long and it's going to be difficult to edit it. All right, I just wanted to go and grab 
this. So once again, this is a Filofax personal planner, rings, six rings, and I have grid inserts, and this is a bullet journal. This is a very structured bullet journal, and this is an example of how or how my last week's exploration, so last week's play, ended. And I really enjoyed this. So these things are now listed down, and then later in the day, I can do mini play where I can decide or apply executive functions and put this down in any of the days that, um, in my dailies, I mean. And that is what's in here. I will have a proper flip through of this. Um, there are quite a lot of channels who have been on um, other planners like Midori and Passport TNs that are now in rings and I'm very happy to see that. I did not get into rings because I saw those. I was already in rings when everyone was going into rings but I am very very happy to see that and I am also quite happy to be on here. So I do have this so I have my bullet journal weeklies, but I also have my Hobonichi weeklies because this is my work play or focus play. My reference for when I have focus hours and you know how you're in focus hours and then things just happen and you don't know things are happening and you forget quite a lot of things because you're just focused on that one thing. It does not list what I do in my focus hours. However, if I am going into my focus hours. I want to take a look at this and see if there is anything that I need to be doing after focus hours or before focus hours. So that was this is for and it had been for quite some time. It's just that I couldn't articulate it because I hadn't made this video and I didn't know about essentialism. All right, so I think I need to end this video because it's 30 minutes long. At least the footage is already 30 minutes. 30 minutes long and thank you so much for watching i hope that you uh, gained something from this video maybe a little bit of clarity if you're interested about any more of my planning journey make sure that you subscribe i will post a video once a week maybe and or i am going to do plan with. we'll see but maybe 12 days of plan with instead of the entire december until the 25th being plan with because i really don't have time it's taking away from my play or maybe i can make it part of my play let's see so that's it for us today thank you for watching once again and i'll see you in the next video bye